this far. Hey. How you doing? Good. We're talking about some things that you won't hear basically being taught. <clears throat> having to do with what the Bible says <clears throat> pertaining to the earth, the world we live on. You're taught in school that the earth is a planet, revolves around the sun, it has a certain diameter, certain dimensions. <clears throat> the Bible tells us different. The Bible tells us the earth is a realm in which you have many different dimensions to it. And in each dimension you have individual intelligences. We're in the book of Corinthians. First Corinthians, and Paul talks about this. <clears throat> you know who Paul is? Uh, one of those guys that God chose or something like that to lead his lead. The church. Yeah. He's, but first Paul he was, he was, a, yeah, he was something else. But. <laughs> yeah, he was a Pharisee. He was a strict Jew. And then he was converted to Christianity. And he began to spread Christianity all around the Middle East. <clears throat> and he teaches deep things for Christians. <clears throat> and some of the things that he teaches deal with what is a Christian's purpose? Mm -hmm. Why are we here? <clears throat> what are we to do? Paul taught two things. Mm -hmm. He taught, number one, that when you become a Christian, you become changed from what you were before. It's called the new birth. Number two is when you become a Christian, you become no longer an inhabitant of this world. You now become an inheritor of another world, a more superior world called heaven. This life is a preparation for entrance into heaven. It's not taught by the churches. What's taught by the churches basically is a life here and now not preparation for what's waiting for you when you pass this life. That's why we're here, because we want to go into the deeper things of Christianity. That's not what I heard about it, but I hear you. Um, I guess I'm learning a little something. What we teach here is don't believe what I'm saying. You search it for yourself. Because you see, your destiny, where you're going to be a million years from now is dependent upon what you do here and now in this life. Because when you leave this place, you're going to go into another reality. Yeah. Depending upon how much you've learned, depending upon what you want to do with what you've learned. Mm -hmm. Most Christians waste their time mm -hmm. because they're ignorant mm -hmm. of what it means to be a Christian. People go to church, mm -hmm. sit in a <coughs> pew 30 years, and think they become a Christian. The Bible says you only become a Christian if you become born again. You have to be changed on the inside. When you're changed on the inside, you're prepared for life in heaven. If you never change on the inside, when you die, you never enter into heaven. You have to be changed. That's why Jesus told a wise man of the Pharisees, you must be born again. You must be changed in order to be able to enter into heaven. Now I'm going to tell you something. They're not teaching church. <clears throat> All the greats of the Bible, David, Abraham, Moses, never entered into heaven because none of them were born again. You read that in your Bible. Jesus never came yet. Jesus came. No, he didn't. Sure he, he did. 2,000 years ago. It's in the Bible. Abraham, Moses, that was before. That was before Jesus. Jesus. Yes. Jesus came 2,000 years ago. Moses lived 3,000 years ago. Hmm. Jesus came to establish what's called the New Covenant. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, David lived under what's called the Old Covenant. Hmm. Different. No promise in the Old Covenant was given to them of life in heaven. Everything they were promised was life on earth. It's called the promised land. That's what they look for to. We look for a better promise, life in heaven. And it's not heaven, it's the heavens. So I suggest when you get time, get all of a Bible, two things, a good King James Bible and a concordance, because your destiny depends on it.
Mm-hmm. Explain to him the born again experience. <clears throat> the born again experience. Well, matter of fact, let's do it. Let's turn over to. We're going to do it from the scripture. Turn over to uh, John the third chapter. <clears throat> Don't forget the question which I asked, which you're going to answer at some stage. What's that? The, the difference between God Lord and God. Oh, <laughs> okay. We're, we're, we're going yeah, to we're gonna put that on hold for a minute. Yeah. Because John the third for a chapter. minute. Yes. John the third chapter. <clears throat> Jesus has a discussion with a man called Nicodemus, who was a wise man of his time. He was a leader of the Jews, but very ignorant of what the Bible promised people. John the third chapter, (coughs) Jesus makes a statement starting in verse three. Jesus answered and said unto him, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The word see there means understand, discern, perceive. Unless a man is born again, he's going to be ignorant of the kingdom of God. It means he's going to live his life and die and never enter into heaven. The Bible calls it two things. It calls it the kingdom of God and it calls it the kingdom of heaven. Unless a man is born again, he can't enter into the kingdom of heaven. <clears throat> How does the man get to the born again? Where is it that he is born again? Born again, born again means that you experience a supernatural birth into the kingdom. John, the first chapter. That's an interesting part about you know, the word of God and reality is people build up, you know strongholds in their lives in their minds religious strongholds of people of things done to them through their time personal or family strongholds of things you know being beaten or you know community strongholds from you know separation and that's the the challenging part is getting over those and you know separating those strongholds from being beaten religious personal community is the is even more challenging without somebody who could you know basically discern which one is which exactly without being walked all over or ignorant of the person that's trying to you know tell them this is what and this is who and this is how you know you will never know until you learn what is the truth You'll be struggling with mindsets, emotional problems. That's why we have to make sure that our community or our household is guarded. You know what I mean? They say guard your heart, you know? Because within it it flows the fruits of life or the death of life at the end of the day. Because if you don't have fruit, you know, you got something that's either deteriorating or dying um, or dead. You're living so in a world that's dying. That's the challenge. That's the part where... Because they don't know the truth. We all die. Sure. We die physically. We don't die spiritually. spiritually Some people die human. spiritually before they die physically. If you know the truth, you'll never die because the truth is eternal. Hmm. Truth is not something you know. Truth is a state of existence that you live in. Mm-hmm. John, the first chapter, talks about the new birth. Yeah. Verse twelve, Starting in verse 12, <laughs> the truth starts with the word of God. Because God is an eternal being that stands outside of time and space. He can see the past, he can see the present, he can see the future all at the same time. And he tells us what is, not what appears to be. Man can't see what is, he can only see what appears to be because his senses are not able to give him absolute objective comprehension. Only his spirit can give him absolute objective comprehension. Therefore, he lives by what he sees, feels, tastes, and hears, which is subjective. So somebody can say something to you that sounds right, you believe it, and it could be a total lie because you can't discern. You have no way in which of evaluating what you hear 
what appears to be from what actually is, right. except by somebody who Who's, knows yeah. what actually is right. and can teach you that. They either it all walked starts it out themselves the or they heard it from another person. Exactly. Now, in, in John the first know, chapter... They don't know if that person is reputable or not. You know what I mean? You know, where to find out. You know? <coughs> and John, walking and John, out what that person... What you... Listen, what, this is what we're saying. We're talking about the new birth experience. This is, this is where truth starts. The new birth. Supernatural birth. You experience something supernatural in your life. Mm -hmm. John, the first chapter, starting verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power... To become the sons of God. No, you got to see it here in the scripture. It's not on for there. Down here on, the, on that page. To them gave he power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born, which were born. It's a birth. Which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. You have to experience a birth that comes only from God. That is called the new birth. You go from the human experience into the divine, eternal experience through the new birth. You become a new creation. So, you're saying <coughs> that you, I experience a new birth when God has, or God has some type of no, it's not what God has. It's what God does to, to you. Like unfold and no, bring no. out life. And God, to, you know. God, God enters into you spiritually mm -hmm. and changes you from temporal to spiritual. Mm -hmm. From a temporal being to an eternal being. That's the new birth. Most Christians don't understand it because they're not taught. That's because the people that they're listening to don't know. You can't teach what you don't know. True. Truth starts with the word of God. Life starts with the word of God because the word of God is eternal. You can spend months on just a little parable, a little part of scripture because the word of God is not limited. It's eternal. And it will give you comprehension as you begin to pursue it. But would you have to put in the effort. Would you like to be come born again? <coughs> I've been a part of church all my life, or a, a good part of my life. In and out of church, you know, I've been drinking and I've been fornicating. Okay, I didn't have it's up to you. If life was that easy, I think a lot of people would be born again and Christians and stuff like that. No, it wouldn't be because they don't understand. Yeah, I understand. I, True. It's not taught. Right. It's not taught. Right. Because right. right. everybody has their own understanding. Have you heard this in church right. any time? When's the no, last time what? you... What we're talking about here. Have you well, heard I'm any sermons even been a preaching Bible, on... No, I'm asking. Have you heard anybody preaching on the born-again experience? This when is, is the last time you heard is, that term, born-again? It's been... Uh, oh, well, I guess. I don't know. People it's not all the time. taught. This is people's eternity. That's that's. Like, it's a common thing. It's not understood. You have to research it for yourself. Nobody's going to tell you. You're and not going to hear it on the six o'clock news. This is not a coincidence. <clears throat> God yeah. sent you to us so that you could understand what He has for you. What He has for you is eternal life, mm -hmm. okay, and life in heaven. Will you let that opportunity pass you by, and maybe you know some other time in your existence that you you'll you know accept it? You know, it's entirely up to you. He gave you free will. You can make your own decisions. Up. You can hear us talk about it. But if you wanted to put it in operation, you you say yes, I want that, or you can wait and find out what is waiting for you when you pass this life and go to the next. It's entirely up to you. God gave you free will. You get to make your own mind up. Is anything that we're saying yeah. interesting to you? <laughs> okay, well, I believe you know. in I believe in Jesus. Um, I believe that He's uh, He died on the cross to uh, save me from the sin that I that have experienced. So. Like you said, it's now and then I have to you know, walk it out and see about, see if, you know, 
what it what, just continues what, what to next does he have to do? He just now he, nothing, nothing. He just went to the born again spirit. <laughs> he just, just you now. just got born again. Isn't that interesting? You weren't even planning on it. But you because, just confessed. Because yeah. you, God sent you to us. Now that you understand, you just now set it in operation. Now you're, you're looking at me like, you know, you, I didn't do anything. Exactly, you didn't do anything. But what you did is allowed yourself to hear what we have to say. And without your knowledge, you confessed what you already know. Jesus is Lord. Yes. So now you have gone through an, a, an experience that will manifest as each day, each and every day that you live. You'll you remember today. You'll remember yeah. today because yes. things, things have changed. Yes. All things have become new. Yes. Right now, spiritually, in your life. What is today? Sunday. The first day of your and life. It you is. Just started. And he oh. brought you here because he wants you. Mm -hmm. He wants you and he wants you to be part of his kingdom. Mm -hmm. and that's, so why brother, you, you know, that's why you came into our path. You celebrate. You celebrate in your mind because, see, you're born again Christian right now. Uh huh. You just, you just you're going to see this week some changes take place in your life that you didn't expect. If you see changes take place in your life this week, you come back here next week. We'll be here. And I'll have coffee. I'll make for sure you. that uh, I take care of the, the spiritual strongholds that are going on in my life. Don't worry about nothing. You don't do anything. And how are you going to tell me not to worry about anything? Don't worry because you can't do anything. You're old. Yeah, and he's yeah, wise. I'm old. You're being taken <coughs> care of by Social Security. <laughs> That's interesting. First you, off, governmentally. That's interesting that you, you guys say had that. that experience where you had to fight your battles. Certainly. Absolutely. I'm still fighting. You had those I'm, still, I'm still fighting, Son, baby. You, you those, are a baby. You had those experiences where you, <laughs> you had are a baby, baby. To, you are. to you know get honey, over a relationship. Honey. Most <laughs> definitely, divorce a wife that you didn't want oh, to hear shit from. Three or times, husband. three times, or husband, three times, baby. And I'm matter. still fighting my life, you honey. Jesus exactly. I'm, and I'm and I'm here because God. I haven't had that experience. Jesus is Lord. But with your help, will you? Will I could you? potentially have that experience. Will you? That's why you. That's why you're here. That would be awesome. I thought I was going to be going to get out. I'm asking you a different question. What, what's the question? Can you say Jesus is Lord? We want to hear you say it. As soon as I see Jesus, <laughs> I'm gonna let him know. So you, you're gonna set up the rules by which you. I'm not setting it up. Yes, yes you sure. are. You <laughs> I'm not setting. Well, I guess I am. Oh baby. I guess I am in that sense. See, the thing you of it have is, not seen and I'll, I'll let him know. Think you have not you gone through. I'll let Jesus gone know that think you have outmaneuvered God. You think right? I'll now. let Jesus know that he is. He's been where he's been in my life since when. You know what? You ought to ask him to show you the way and out, he's of been the, there. out of the strongholds that you're in right now. The thing is, people are people. Excuse me. People are people. And Jesus is Lord. That's and they're right. always going to be people until people understand that we need to get together and work. <laughs> well, I didn't do anything. I know you didn't. <laughs> Young people, young people, young people, young people, young people, you know what I mean? Older people, he's doing that. It's a blessing when older people pray for younger people. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, I really got to try to enjoy myself and my life. Every spirit that can be part of that situation. And we see the enemy trying to. I try to enjoy myself. You guys have to be in charge. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you, sweetheart. Don't touch him. Don't touch him. Don't touch him. You can touch him. You can touch him. Father God, I just ask for you to be with this young man, Lord, Father Jesus, that you will just watch over him and keep him safe. In and Jesus thank name. you for bringing him here so that we can all pray for him. Uh, in Jesus pray name. For him and show him the, what, is, what he is missing because he is special and yes, you Lord. want him and we are going to pray for him in Jesus name. Amen. In Jesus name. Amen. You're now a little property of the Lord because you confessed Jesus is your Lord. You have a new owner today. <clears throat> 
Too late. late. <laughs> We're gonna see you when you come to get some food, okay? When is this? Next when week. you normally come. You've been there before. All right. You know what time it is. Yeah. Give me a hand. Take care. We love you, brother. Yeah. Take, Take care. God bless. Show us You too. Jesus is Lord. 